Okay, ideally, this is a five second question. You should be able to recognize that they're giving you the circle in the best possible format. It is X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. So we get uh, just from this formula, the center, which is gonna be five, three, and that doesn't really matter for us, but the radius does because they want to know the diameter of the circle. So if 16 is the radius squared, then the radius itself is four, and then remember the diameter is just double the radius, so eight is the radius, or is the diameter, see? And that's the key here, is there's a good chance we messed this up, even though we know all those things because you know, we maybe jump the gun a little bit, right? We we forget that the radius squared is the R. So we think of 16 as the radius instead of four. And so then we double the 16 to get 32. So that's a little bit of a trap. Uh, maybe some people do this where they forget the difference between square root and, and dividing something by two. I see this all the time. It drives me nuts. But a lot of people will look at 16, know that it's like the radius squared and then they like in their head divide it by two and they get eight as the radius instead of four. And then they might double it and pick 16. So this is like a trap and a careless mistake all rolled into one. Um, and then four, right? This is just read the question. This is careless because you didn't read what they wanted. Yes, the radius is four, but they wanted the diameter. A simple move is just doubling it. So every answer choice here is wrong, but kind of right, right? Just right enough that it might be tempting to us. So really, really be careful. If for some reason you did not know the circle formula, which you should, it's very important for a, at least one question per test, we could uh, put this thing in Desmos. I don't love it, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. X minus five squared plus Y minus three squared equals 16. And what Desmos does with circles is it, I think it's doing this because it, it's giving us the maximum and the minimum. I think anytime we have uh, something graphed, Desmos is really good about letting us touch, tap the maximum or the minimum values. And that's also true of like local maximums and mins. So if it's going up and down, those, those ones that are kind of like, uh, clearly a turning point, I guess would be the better word. Those are gonna be tappable. So we can't go left and right but we can go up and down. And if we go up and down, we can see that this diameter is seven uh, above the x-axis and one below it. So the seven plus the one is where the eight comes from. So that is possible. Um, it's better than nothing. I, I, again, I think it's better to just know how to do this with the equation. It's faster. It's, you know, it's something you should know for if, in case these questions get harder. But if you're just trying to get by, just trying to get to that 600, 650, then Desmos can save this from it for you. So uh, yeah, don't be afraid to use it, I guess.